Uh, now we would like to to start our panel discussion. So it's a final part of our risk and FPJ area. So I would like to our participants to come and sit. Okay. Uh, first of all, I will start from introducing myself. Uh, my name is Aliona Boudai, and I'm responsible for quality assurance project in Exact Pro. Uh, those projects are <laughs> related to FPJ in GPU uh, hardware testing. So, and also I would like our participants to introduce themselves if you want. Don't mind. <laughs> uh, we can start right from this side. So, Milan, could you please introduce okay, yourself? Finish my presentation. Well, hi, my name is Milan from NetGroup Technologies, and I'm the director of low latency department of NetGroup Technologies. Hi, um, I'm back. Uh, for those of you who stepped out in the last 10 minutes, I am still Michael Villain. I'm still uh, uh, running head of uh, business development for NanoSpeed, and we're an FPGA platform company. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Maxim Rodowski. I am head of development in uh, quality assurance in uh, sorry in Exact Pro Systems. And um, no, okay, my experience in FPGA. We two years ago we started some uh, proof of concepts in FPGA project to just uh, get experience in this technology for preparing uh, for future testing of uh, this uh, this technology. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ilga. I'm software and hardware specialist. And mostly use primary hardware available on the market to make accelerations in algo trading. Thank you. Hello again. My name is Vladimir Kulenchik. I'm uh, business development director in Arca Technologies. Our company also has some R&D experience in FPGA story, but I think on this round table I will be, I will be like a dark side of the moon uh, because of. Uh, uh, because of uh, audience who, who we can see now on this table, thanks. So as you know, a lot of companies use hardware to improve their tracing. Uh, today we would like to discuss some parts of those hardware acceleration and uh, since there are a lot of discussion going on on those areas. And I think the first question will be uh, related to the FPGA need, need, needness. So, is there is a need for FPGA uh, in trading community? So, Milan, what do you think? Okay, thank you. Um, um, it depends a lot of on what a customer wants to do. For some use cases, of course, a simple low latency NIC is enough when you run most of your stuff in software. But uh, if you need to do additional processing in the in the hardware, uh, process the market data, order entry, and so on, you need the programmab programmability of the of the FPGA to even implement this. So I would say yes if you want to uh, take the next step. Uh, the FPGAs are the perfect match how to tackle the electronic trading world. Um, if there is anybody wants to add something on this topic, so do you uh, see FPJ? Okay, I think that um, FPJ can be used in um, uh, specific areas like um, protocol parsing. Um, uh, so, for example, f like a software developer, I just need that FPJ uh, write in a memory in specific address uh, data that it received from exchange uh, market data provider, something like this. And after that, in C or C++, with 16 cores or 64 cores, I can process with uh, as, uh, in the same speed, I think, like in uh, FPJ. But maybe I'm wrong, sorry. Um, yeah, but that's what you said, that you still use FPJ to process the protocol. Yes, yes, I, I think we need this, but uh, not not implementing the whole platform in one card. Uh, and yeah. uh, we don't know what it happened in this card, uh, how to monitor this, and uh, and it's very difficult to maintain, I think, this solution. For example, if uh, some uh, provider, market data provider, introduced new fields, 
uh, we need um, companies that uh, give us this solution to compile, optimize uh, this FPG solution, and uh, upload this code in this card. I don't know how long it takes, but I think uh, weeks. Uh, just to adding one, one field to one protocol. Less for our opinion, it's actually the same. We can develop in C++, let's say C++ 11 or C++ 14, using the latest C technology, put it on a very good Intel processor with high clock rates, and then you achieve around, yes, not one, not two, but less than 10 microseconds for the whole cycle. When you get the input, then you get less than 10 micros and you pr produce the output. That is what, what is happening now if you make good software and hardware collaboration. Um, let's continue with commodity risk differentiator versus differentiator. So there is a quite a large number of risk gateways, uh, market data processors based on FPGA. Uh, do you think there is still a need to, uh, let's say, develop in-house the FPGA-based products, or it's better to buy something which is already at the market and start using that? Um, I mean, whether you're, you're talking about FPGAs or any other kind of technology, it's the old debate of buy uh, versus build. Um, the only little difference, which is a major difference uh, when you're talking about FPGAs, is basically the uh, development testing, uh, regression testing, and, and um, uh, production time um, to, to get um, an FPGA-based platform uh, to get it to market. Um, now, most of the companies that we're talking to uh, basically have They've drawn the line in the sand and they've decided, okay, this is how far we're ready to go in doing our own internal developments. And this is where we think it might actually make more sense for us to actually outsource it to a vendor. There's a number of factors that come into play. You want to keep control or retain or get control increasingly over your algos. And that, that's basically something you're not ready to openly share with any kind of vendor. Um, I haven't come across yet um, prop training firms that uh, have come and told us, um, yes, we'll share all of our algos and uh, we'll let you um, actually upload them on a card for us, and a PGA card, not yet. Um, but I'm not despairing. Uh, up until now, those folks are basically asking us to provide them with an FPGA framework, if you will, or a vehicle, uh, where some of the functionality that they see as not being necessarily of add value to them to develop um, will be provided by a vendor like ourselves. When it comes to developing or offloading their algos on a, an FPGA card, for instance, uh, they will want to actually keep that in-house. Uh, from my point of view, uh, uh, when we talk about FPGA, we, in all, in most of situation, we, we, we talk about latency competition in most of situation. Uh, and uh, uh, in, this, in this race, there are no several vi winners. Winner is only one. So that means that it will be always competition. And uh, from this point of view, you could not buy the solution which help you win. You can buy um, a cut, you can buy help from uh, some vendor in, in, in developing, but you always need to develop something. So it's always about in-house, but maybe with some, some help uh, of, of some specialist in this particular area. So there is no commodity in this, in this topic from my point of view. There is a, a lot of cuts, a lot of players who, who know how to program FPGAs, but there, are, there is no solutions, I can say which you can buy and win. Um. As for myself, I would say that there is a division in-house or out-of-house, exactly as Michael said, buy-side and sell-side. Sell-side would buy FPGA for, let's say, risk management of their clients. Mm -hmm. And buy-side, yeah. I would suspect they will not ever come to a vendor asking them, please develop my algo on your FPGA. That's something that will not happen. Same point of view. Um, I agree with that. I can confirm this experience for various clients. 
I just wanted to follow up. It was mentioned previously the problem of ever changing market data protocol, added fields, and so on. Uh, so the in-house work, the implementation, if you do it yourself, doesn't stop. Uh, well, doesn't stop <laughs> because uh, the protocols are still evolving. It is constant work to keep up. So this is uh, where the vendors might come very handy because uh, you don't have to worry about the updates. You receive the updates from vendors. And additionally, if you are thinking about moving to a new exchange, if you want to you know, spread your portfolio, uh, you can just add another feed handler from the, from the vendor. So it can save you a lot of work with the updates, new protocols, and so on. So that's another you know, <coughs> advantage when using at least I have some IP cores from, from other vendors that you don't have to worry about this low level stuff when you do not want to be dealing with anyway because you need to focus on what's specific for you and that's the, that's the strategy. Mm, okay, uh, I agree actually with all answers. Uh, I think that if you would like to use FPJ, you need, uh, you need team uh, with expertise uh, but uh, yes, you can use uh, consultancy services uh, and uh, buy a course, uh, third-party course to process, but it's not possible to just buy a solution and that's all. You tie it to, you will be tied in uh, for one vendor and it's, in, it's impossible for business, I think. So taking into account that a lot of discussions going on and PJ, so it's too difficult to implement, too time effective, too, um, let's say, too cost effective. Why do you think, um, from other hands, FPJ got a bad reputation? So uh, among those <laughs> capabilities of FPJ. Well, maybe uh, one of the reasons could be that uh, there's been a number of FPGA projects, uh, whether in-house or actually outsourced to vendors, that actually have miserably failed. That would be uh, one of the reasons. So, because it's, and to complement what I was saying beforehand, um, there's a number of firms that have uh, strategically made the decision that uh, they would uh, fully go in-house. Um, big names in the market uh, that have decided, okay, we're gonna assemble the team. So they've, they've recruited a number of um, uh, PGA engineers and they've decided to develop their own um, blocks, um, whether they're pre-trade risk checks or, or, or market data fee handlers. Um, three, five years ago for some of them. Um, but you also have to keep in mind, just like in software, uh, except that it's a bit more complex, um, the time to market is way longer, uh, then you have to support them. Every time an exchange is basically upgrading, well, you have to upgrade your platform as well. Uh, if you're running on three or four, even worse, five-year-old FPGA cards, well, I mean, the world has basically uh, uh, moved around five times um, in the last five years. And then looking at what's coming up in the next year or two uh, with, um, with Intel, um, that's going to be seriously interesting uh, to, uh, to witness and be a part of. With a vendor, you're limiting your risk. Basically, they're taking care of all that stuff for you, normally. Um, but the bad rep, yeah, pretty much is basically due to failed initiatives and projects. Okay. Do anyone have another well, I think uh, if you talk about reputation, reputation is really good. In uh, FPGA has a very good reputation because of these uh, things which you just mentioned in, in your question. It's uh, quite expensive. It's very good for, for this area reputation. If you did this project, so that means for the market, you have this money, you have people who understand what you want to do. It's also expensive sorry, story. If you may spend such money, that means that uh, it's really good uh, uh, you, you are in really good financial situation. So from from point of view of uh, cost, it's really good reputation. From point of view of sp uh, technical results, it's also quite quite, uh, quite quite good reputation. If you did this project, you are one of the fastest. Uh, it's, it's really good for your reputation. I would so everything is okay from my point of view. I would actually disagree with that because it depends on the logic of implementation in, based on FPJ. So anyway, you have a part of the logic which is not based on FPJ. And that part of this, uh, your software could 
delay much longer than the FPGA based related part. So it it's also depends, right? Even if you use hardware, FPGA, you won't be as fast as you can imagine. In, in all technical project, it may be purely software or, or some, 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 some mix of software or hardware, you should uh, fully understand what is your architecture and what are benefits in your architecture. You should do it in, in all projects. So if you come to, to the decision that FPGA can help you in this particular project, it's just a technical decision, uh, nothing more. Thank you. Um, so going further, um, what's the next in FPGA generation, in hardware acceleration? So what do you think will be next? Okay, you let me try switch a bit from FPGA to something better. Let's say a new transmission media. We, for the data, yes, for the data. Well, optical cable, and then those microwaves appeared, and then probably more stable microwave for a longer range, less weather sensitivity. That's what might happen as a hardware acceleration further. And from my own practice, let's say GPU. GPU development can help to further improve modeling calibration for trading. That, that is what also happening, not only FPGA cards, not only network related stuff, but let's say graphical cards, they also help to make better trading algos. I would maybe partly uh, disagree with the you know, um, networking technology like the, because most of the exchanges today are still using 10G Ethernet and then there's not uh, I don't know much people who would want to move to 40G or 100G because it is much more expensive and the benefit is not very big. So, and the throughputs are more than, more than enough. Uh, most of the exchanges would work with 1G, but due to latency reasons they are using 10G, but I don't see any you know, inclination to going, going further than that. Yes, but when it comes to trading on, let's say, arbitrage strategy, let's say we have Chicago and New York, let's say there is an opportunity. And if you are a bit faster, if you have a better microwave link between those two locations, it doesn't have to be 40 GES. It can be just a bit faster in terms of latency. Yes, but that is already happening. That's like currently what's a hot hot topic, especially in the, in the USA, interconnecting different cities. You know, if you come to conference, there are at least five companies that provide direct links between different exchanges. So that is very, very current. Um, I would maybe like to follow up. You know, I don't think uh, the hardware acceler acceleration doesn't have anything exciting for us in the next few years because you know the Moore's law for CPUs uh, hasn't been working recently. We all know that the performance in the CPU is not increasing that significantly. On the other hand, the FPGA chips are getting more and more larger. For example, in the last two or three years, the size of FPGA chip increased four times. And we are expecting that to happen again in a couple of years, which means there are four times more logic cells that we can use to implement new functionality, add new things to the, to the FP, FPGA, and that brings further uh, challenges on the, on the implementation. It will be more and more difficult you know, to implement it. So that's a challenge for us vendors, I think, to you know, come up with ideas and to actually make the projects to, to use what the next generation has to has to offer. It's by the way interesting message because uh, uh, all, all, all this process which you just mentioned uh, will not come to the situation when FPGA cards will have enough memory to change the class of uh, task which you can do on FPGA card. You, you, you will have more ventils for processing logic 
but you never will have uh, enough memory to process data, uh, data management on this card. So, uh, yes, you are right, uh, the technical progress we will go in, in, this, in this way, but uh, it will be still the same, uh, the same type of task which we will solve on FPGA cards. So, in this sense, uh, if we talk about potential drivers for from te technology to and uh, potential effects from technology for trading, I, uh, I, I think I more agree with uh, Ilgar because some, some other areas should bring more opportunities to, 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 to automate in trading and to this environment in general because only only uh, uh, processing uh, uh, cuts or CPUs or CPUs or GPUs or just uh, or FPGA itself, it's uh, not all what we need to, to automate our process in trading. So any enhancement in all parts or in, in any part of, of whole architecture can bring innovation. For example, if, I don't know, if... Uh, if, uh, for example, uh, disk will be much more faster than now, it, it may open new windows and new, new opportunities for new type of algorithms, for example. So. But anyway, you are speaking about hardware. Why do you think uh, people from business, from trading, don't improve uh, logic, trading logic or protocols? to meet the requirements of PGA, so to be more, let's say, uh, time challenge to, to increase, the, again, the capabilities of trading, trading and exchange abilities. Well, it's easy question. It's business reason, nothing more. It's not about technology. It's about business. You have just a few players who will be pleased because of this, your enhancement, and you need to spend a lot of uh, money, time, and, and so on and so forth to do this, so it's easy. But uh, I think, for example, fixed length protocols, it's actually for FPGA. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> FPGA can deal with some kind of parsing, but as Vladimir said, it's only a part of something, a part of a bigger picture, much bigger. Let's say we have to interconnect different hardware types to understand what can we do in, with current market situation. FPJ will contribute by parsing the market data, let's say, for myself. Uh, CUDA technology will incorporate by providing a better modeling online to, to the algo itself that makes a decision. Intel chipsets and well, mainstream chipsets will help to take the decision what to do. Then let's say the same TCP of load stuff will help to bypass the stack and put my order to, to the exchange. Let's say uh, Ethernet will go away and InfiniBand will be connected. Then it's another couple of micros. That's the whole stuff that brings you to the edge. It's not only one thing that makes you a better one. Thank you. Does anyone has another opinion? Or um, just one thing. Yep. The new protocols really are FPGA friendly that are currently introduced. Because, you know, um, in the past, the problem was bandwidth. So they were coming up with compression algorithms to reduce the bandwidth. Okay. Currently, it's not bandwidth, it's, it's uh, processing power. So they are making the protocols easier so they can be uh, faster. But you are speaking about internal protocols, so which are from one component to another component, no, not I'm, customer facing. I'm talking about market data market protocols. Data. Okay. For example, new uh, protocol at NYSE, XDP. Okay. It's binary fixed length, very, very uh, good for, for FPJ processing. But it's still TCP IP, right? It's, U, it's UDP. UDP, but what, how FPJ will be able to process data in case of gaps in multicasts? What, how how uh, to improve the latency again, if we are speaking about latency? So anyway, the FPJ should be able right in time get that gap and get the information inside the platform. Uh, 
that depends on customer requirements, not necessarily. Okay. Not, not everyone does that, but that's a good point. Uh, that this is not easily done in the FPGA, okay. but that's why you have uh, usually dual multicast channels so you can fill in the gaps from the UDP. So it will be a software logic which will be help for the FPGA? Yes. Okay, I think we're quite limited uh, in our time and we are right <laughs> in front of our lunch, so <laughs> in case if anyone has some questions, we can ask them, or you can ask them during the lunch, so I would like to announce that our table discussion has end, finished. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.